Cerianthids are solitary polyps of the Cnidaria family. Like all members of this group, which also include corals, jellyfish, and anemone, they unfurl their sticky and stinging tentacles in order to capture organic particles and plankton that the currents bring in. They have shorter tentacles around their mouth that draw food towards their digestive tract and maintain the receptacle clean. Some species can even form small colonies. Other solitary anemones, such as Alicia mirabilis, which in Latin means marvelous, possess a mobile foot with which they move about to place themselves in strategic areas of abundance. When they finish their activity, they retract, curling in to hide during the day. Well anchored in sandy or muddy substrate, the Seranthius membranaceus raises its neck by using a vascular system made of valves and membranes. By increasing the water pressure in its interior, it is able to raise itself 40 centimeters from the ground to extend its tentacles. Thanks to a mucus it segregates, sedimentary particles, sand, and compact calcareous remains adhere to it, making its retractile trunk much more resistant. Within the same species, Tentacles can have different tonalities, but all of them activate their stinging nematocytes, which paralyze and ensnare anything that runs into its trap upon contact. Some anemones know exactly which surfaces to colonize. This Caliactis parasitica grows only on the shells of gastropods, which are reused by hermit crabs, particularly of the Dardanus calidus species, with which it carries out an extremely important symbiotic activity, lending it protection in exchange for mobility. When the size of two or even three anemone becomes so excessive that they are also a burden to the hermit crab, the symbiosis can evolve into foracy, endangering the balance of the relationship. Although the traction power of this crustacean and the low gravity of the sea can make these anemone grow surprisingly large before seriously affecting their carriers. In summer and spring nights, the full moon calls millions of beings to reproduce. Many others take advantage of the opportunity to obtain food easily unleashing a feeding frenzy that leaves no doubt as to the brutal structure of the food chain. From the bottom, where grouper and scorpion fish that blend in perfectly with their environment loom, to the highest levels where great schools of sardines, herrings and silver sides anxiously await for the great banquet.
In perfect synchrony with the phases of the moon, these veriform beings that are part of the zooplankton spawn in total coordination to ensure that as many offspring as possible survive their predators. Many males quickly surround a female to stimulate her and induce her to release eggs, which will be fertilized externally. These will be dispersed by the soft currents of open waters, where they will develop into its various larval phases until, as adults, they approach the coast to reproduce. <laughs> 